and welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helbig. Very exciting episode. As always, we have model, actress, mother, and now podcast host Molly Sims with us today. We talk about uh, how she got started in Kentucky in the modeling industry, how she left uh, her college life behind and went to pursue uh, glamorous jobs in the big city um, and how it almost uh, got ruined for her in Germany. Hear all about that wild story. We also talk about a brand new podcast, Lipstick on the Rim, that she's just started with her best friend, where she gets to meld her, you know, curated, beautiful model actress life with her kind of messy, ridiculous and hilarious and wine drinking mom life. It's kind of the perfect combo. We also talk about how she and I have met in real life years ago on the one and only show Cupcake Wars. It's quite an endeavor. Anyway, I had a super fun time talking with Molly this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy Not Too Deep with Molly Sims. Molly, I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, We have a history, which is so silly and so fun. Um, We met on, what, what was it? Cupcake Wars? Cupcake Wars. Yes, that would be correct. <laughs> we, that's such, such a great oh. intro. We actually met on Cupcake Fucking Wars. Um, yeah. Okay, but see, the, the, here's the, the difference in um, us being there. One, you should have been there because you know how to bake. Two, I should not have been there because I have absolutely no fucking clue how to bake whatsoever. And it was a very fun but incredibly stressful day. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I actually do know how to bake. I'm a terrible actual cook, but I'm a decent baker. But you think like, oh, it's just cupcakes, right? Yeah, like, it's right. simple. How could you mess up a cupcake? I swear to God, I wore like this checkered. <sighs> I still remember when we like dressed in like checkered blue. Tracy you guys look so cute. We did. We did. We <laughs> looked cute. We were a disaster, sweating. But I remember being like, I actually threw that shirt away because it was so stained. It had yeah. smelled because I was sweating and stressed. I mean, what would, why do you think like a cupcake show would like hit every nerve Everything. in your body? It's because cooking, I think, or baking rather, is normally very relaxing. I mean, I don't even do it in my free time. That's how uh, out of uh, place I was in that situation. But also, there's so many devices in the kitchen and so many cameras and so many producers. And it's all happening like in real time. And meanwhile, it's happening on four other stations in real time. (laughs) You can't see us, but we're (laughs) using our hands wildly and fans of gray. Like literally, it was very, very, very extremely stressing. And you know, when you take jobs that you leave your kids, you leave your family, yeah. it's going to be amazing. I've got a day off. <laughs> I'm just going to bake. You know, it's like you said, baking should be relaxing. Yeah. It's not. It's it called was, cupcake fucking wars. It was. I just remember that Coolio put an entire lemon in his cupcake and they didn't like that. And that made me laugh so hard. And two, you were the nicest. You like came over to me and my friend Hannah and like introduced yourself and you were like sugar to the core. And I just remember you leaving and uh, Hannah and I just being like, she was the nicest, most beautiful woman. Aww, <laughs> it's you like guys. full little girls. I love um, me some Hannah as well. I know. Oh, oh I, she's so great. Um, okay. Well, let's talk about uh, years later. Here we are. Um, and you have, uh, you've been one, you wear so many hats. Uh, you do so many different things. Uh, and currently, you've just launched a new podcast. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, talk I to me about this. I am now in the podcasting world. Honestly, I never thought I would be in the podcasting world. Really? Um, I do. Yeah, I, I I do love to talk. And I, and I, I love, you know, talk on camera, hosting. I just never thought I would be... Um, be a podcaster. And I don't know why I was starting to write a book. Mm -hmm. Um, but we were thinking about relaunching mollysims.com and then a couple of other things are started brewing, uh, for 2022 and 23. And I gotten some really good advice, um, from a woman who is the GM, um, 
at Birdie and Leanne said to me, Birdie's a big beauty site that yeah. all of us go to and just, it's awesome. Um, and she was like, you know, you have this like, you have this like great aspirational, beautiful, perfect, you know, site. But then you also have like almost like an alter ego, like a Sasha fierce, yeah. like TikTok. <laughs> You hide in your closet and drink, you tie up and, you know, tape your children and you take their glow in the dark water bottles and drink in the pantry and eat candy. (laughs) And so she was like, I really wish I could see both. And Mm. I was like, I know, but it's like, com is all beauty and it's like my tips and it's 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 got to be very polished because you want yes. people to think you're awesome right but then on the other side you're like oh, okay well this is just who I am and I you know from years of being in the business and acting and not being able to you know do as much with acting as much as I used to even though I miss it because I have mm-hmm. three crazy children um it was a great way to be able to meld both of those worlds together. My love yeah. of beauty and wellness. And then also literally me talking to my best friend of 17 years, Emma Shogormali. She has three kids. I mean, you should have seen that pitch when you're trying to pitch. Uh, like, She's amazing. She has absolutely <laughs> fucking no experience, but you should spend thousands of dollars on letting her be my co-host. Let her talk. <laughs> Let her talk. Anyway, they chemistry tested her. And as you know, you can't make chemistry. And Mm -mm. it was kind of a sign seal delivered in about 20 minutes. So wow. Wait, um, so how did how did you guys meet each other 17 years ago? 17 years ago, Grace at Sundance. Um, Mm -hmm. I was getting giving getting over a a massive breakup. Mm -hmm. And um, I was hanging out with much younger, I thought, cool guy at the time. (laughs) Um, but and I complimented her hair. Um, at the Sundance. <laughs> she has this lioness, uh-huh. beautiful gold, blonde with ombre. It's just like beautiful, like the per- the most perfect non brassy <laughs> highlights yeah. you've ever seen. I and can anyway, picture you complimenting her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're still very obsessed with her hair. I am. She always has great. She's literally, she's the best <laughs> hair. And, um, And then, you know, I casually, we talked and then I'm like, oh, if you're ever in LA, you know, give me a shot. I didn't really mean it, but, (laughs) um, anyway, she, she did. And then when I was in New York, she's like, Hey, I'm in New York. I'm like, okay, are you stalking me? (laughs) Um, but 17 years later, she is the one person that I talk about everything with. I talk beauty, wellness. I talk heartache, heartbreak. You know, I talk our, both our moms passed. Her moms passed of pancreatic cancer, and we're just very transparent, very real. And I have to say, for something that I was very um, kind of torn about doing, it mm-hmm. is actually the one thing that I look forward to, and I, I mean, have a lot must- of fun. It must be so nice because I always wonder, you know, you come from the modeling world, you move into the acting world and then into like the like beauty. And like you said on your blog, it's very polished and curated. But then you have this very like authentic, silly, real side of you. So it must be nice to finally bring those worlds together rather than like living in one or the other. It is. I actually saw a clip that someone pulled that um, Ashley put on my social media And it was, we were shooting Sports Illustrated and they were asking me questions. And I can remember being like, I am not a model. I'm an actress. (laughs) Oh yeah, I saw this clip. I am an actress. (laughs) But at the time I was actually making fun of all the models who would shit on their modeling career now that they were (laughs) actors. So believe it or not, like 20 years later, like I still, even though modeling, you know, it was very interesting path to, 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 to finally get to probably what I ultimately should have always been doing. Mm. Um, you know, it just caused you to have an eating disorder, body dysmorphia and, Ugh. but all the other things, you know, that it <laughs> but aside here, from but, those minor things, but yeah, aside it's from those minor things, you know, I actually <laughs> loved what modeling did for me. You know, yeah. I, um, it gave me some opportunities that I would have never had. And, you know, I've, I've met, 
some of the best in the business. So it's going to be real. It's going to be transparent. I've got cool. incredible people. And Emisha, re- we really are like two best friends that just fucking love to talk. <laughs> We're like, where did you get that? How did you get it? And how did you get it at a fucking discount? Yeah. And that's what you're going to like. We're those two best friends that do share a love of connecting people. Yeah. And do you know what I decided though, Grace? What? What's that? I have three kids and like, I'm not going to overshare because then people steal. Okay. So that's also part of my question because one, your kids are stunning. No surprise, but you, um, they're on your Instagram. And I always wonder with moms that are being, you know, transparent, like, do you create boundaries for yourself? Do you say like, I'll share what I'm comfortable with and, and then hold back what I'm not? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You know, <laughs> you're not going to see a docu series on the E network about <laughs> Molly Sims and Scott Stuber. So, um, even though I love me some E, um, uh-huh. but yeah, there's not going to be a Bravo or Real Housewife <laughs> of you know the Stuber household. Yeah, listen, I I love sharing. I love you know. My mom had this quote: "If you feel good, you look good, and if you look good, you feel good." And I. Mm. I I love sharing what I go through. I love sharing and being honest, but there is a certain limit that I put on, you know, sharing, you know, with myself and 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 what I want to put out there, but also with my with my kids. You know, my kids mm-hmm. are very small, but there will come a point when he'll be like, Mom, yeah, you know, I know my hair looks really cute, but I don't <laughs> want you to share it on social. You know what I mean? But, yeah. And that'll be kind of cool to see that they're taking agency over their own like yeah. identity online. And I want them to, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, listen, to each his own, but I, you know, I over my dead body will scarlet model. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, she will have to creep ask and crawl over If me. they, if they want to be in the entertainment or like, you know, artist kind of uh, path, is there a line that you will draw? Is modeling out, but like acting's in? Or is this kind of an ongoing thing that you're... Um, right now it's completely out on every level of every corner <laughs> of every single <laughs> pulse of who I am. Yeah. You know, the one thing I will say is that I did not get into this business. I went to my prom. I graduated from high school. I mm-hmm. went to Vanderbilt, even though I left up starting my junior year. I, I had a childhood. If my kids in whatever path that they think. And I know, and they're going to pull this clip like 20 years from now, <laughs> Grace. I'm like, yeah, I told you so, Mom. Uh-huh. But I will support them, of course. But it's really important for me, for them to have a childhood. Yeah. And as, as we both know, getting into this industry at such a young age, you know, there's that old saying that when you become famous, that that is the age mm-hmm. that you stop maturing. That is an age that you kind of are stunted. Yeah. And there are very few amazing actors, models, musicians that have come out on the other side. Yeah. And not that you want to take all of those stepping stones away, or you want to always band-aid, you know, the problem because you don't, and you have to let them fail and fall and get back up. But I do, I do want them to have a childhood and I I do. That's interesting because, you know, when people think of you, they think of you in the famous sense or like the successful sense that you did have a childhood. You did grow up in Kentucky, right? I went to Kentucky. I walked to my local elementary school. Yeah. I played basketball. I played, you know, baseball. I, I hated cheerleading, but whatever. <laughs> um, I was, I'm not really a sorority kind of girl, even though I went to Vanderbilt, like, you know, everyone always doing the same things was kind of creeps me out at a very young age. But, um, my mom was very good at teaching me to be my own person and very acceptable of other people, even mm. if they weren't like you. And so, yeah, I'm from Kentucky. I was, you know, a brownie, um, for those of you who are young, that's a younger, that's, it's part of the Cub Scouts. Okay? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's not um, just like amazing a... Girl Scout cookies still at 47. Um, oh, nice. What's your favorite flavor? Mm, if you have one. 
I'm still, I'm still into, uh, well, you know, they have a new s'mores flavor. Oh, actually, Grace. I was not aware. See, you oh, are still like my Samoa. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> the classics, the classics. Um, now, I'm curious in this last year, it feels like you've obviously created this podcast, which is so exciting. Um, have you picked up any other hobbies? Have you picked up any other um, TV obsessions or anything like that? Well, we're actually watching The Serpent now at, on Netflix. Oh, I don't know what this is. Yeah, it's really, really good. It's about... Um, um, two French people who end up going to India and I want to say Bangkok, Thailand. And, um, he is a, like a jewelry smuggler. Okay. Um, but then he ends up possibly being a serial killer, but I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let the eight or nine episodes play it out. Got um, it. But that's really fun. Um, if you know me, I love books. I mm. love every type of gone girl. Mm. Um, you know, they actually did a great clip about women in their 40s obsessed with murder on <laughs> yes. SNL. And I actually might be one of those people. I'm just saying like, but I also fall asleep so early that my husband has watched like the same episode of like the bitter pill on on Dateline so many times because <laughs> yeah. I fall asleep. He goes, here's the fucking ending. I've seen it seven times because you fall asleep. But I do. I, I, I like reading... Um, kind of gone girl ask books. I mm. got the opportunity to um, um, meet an author named Lisa Jewell, who's an incredible author. She's English. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a bit of, uh, I'm doing a bit of movie producing and TV producing on the Ooh, other side of my life. Heck yeah. My little, uh, my little side hustle <laughs> has become a full hustle. Um, nice. Which is, Grace, I'm about to pitch a TV show right after you, right here. I've got what all my the notes. heck? Spoilers. 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 Um, but yeah, so that's been kind of interesting to kind of tiptoe in and out of that world. Um, I have to say, not leaving your house for many, many, many weeks, you can get yeah. a lot of shit done. Yeah, you can. You can also get absolutely nothing done. You <laughs> can absolutely get nothing done. We... Um, we more and more people are staying in their homes like two or three years ago there's a couple um clea and joanna the home edit we're doing season two of the home edit um mm. it'll which will premiere next year on uh netflix and that's all about organization so i think yeah. people have definitely done a deep dive into organizing their house their homes like i just literally before i sat down i was like why is my plastic picnic table got it dirty? And like, I can't wear my notes. <laughs> yeah. No, are you weird. a very, you're a very organizational person. That's how you operate. You know, I am. And I know okay. this is going to sound crazy, but I'm a Gemini. So there is like definitely like nine people um, <laughs> in my head. And so anyone could come out, but yeah. the organization of the nine Geminis, they, it's very strong. It needs to be strong. It is okay. like my therapy. <laughs> If I walk in the room and it's zen, if it's calm, mm -hmm. things are put away, I, I can be an animal grace. I can get so much stuff done. I can't even tell you. That's very true. I feel like I, I strive to be an organized person. Um, but I also am like secretly lazy. And so I won't do the organization. However, the one thing that bothers me the most that is like really become exponentially bothersome in the pandemic is like when dishes are in the sink, that's like the thing I need to clean my whole sink out before I can like even sit down, uh, near the kitchen to get it anything done. So I don't know what that says. Yeah, no, it says a lot. It says a <laughs> lot. It, it It is weird how we get these, these absolute tiny obsessions mm -hmm. that can make or break your day. Yeah. It's weird. It's, it's very weird. strange. Very it's like strange. a girl getting Little... great hair color. For me, <laughs> I can have a great day. If you don't compliment it, I can't, I don't have as good of a day, but still internally much better than it started. There you go. Okay. We're going to take a, a quick break. And when I get back, I have more questions for you, including the two questions I ask every single guest that's on the podcast. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. With Grace Helbig. Hello, listeners. Grace Helbig here. Wanting to say two things, a big thank you for listening to the podcast 
Uh, if you're a regular listener, if this is your first time listening, welcome and thank you. And uh, second thing, if you are enjoying yourself here in this not too deep world we've built and you'd like to leave us a review, that would be so wonderful. If you can go to the iTunes store, the app store and leave us a lovely little review comment. How are you feeling? Good, bad, otherwise? Maybe just good or otherwise would be appreciated. Other than that, enjoy the podcast. Okay, and jumping back in, quick question. What are your current book recommendations if people are current looking for book recommendations? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Hopefully. <laughs> um, okay. Let me refer to my copious notes. Let me refer to my copious notes. Okay, well, uh, I'll, I mean, I would say The Anonymous Girl. Okay. Um, it's uh, from Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pakinen. I would do The Wife Upstairs. Okay, from Rachel taking Hawkins. notes. Mm-hmm. I would do, um, oh, my girlfriend, Emma shot. I, I mean, she was just here when we were, we were podcasting grace <laughs> uh-huh. and she loved the whisper man by Alex North. Okay. And then definitely Lisa Joel, Lisa Jewel, um, family upstairs and anything from Ruth Ware. Okay. Um, the other misses from Ma- Mary Kubeka. I mean, I could go on and on. I know. All- I'm like, wow, there is mm. uh, a lot of uh, gold Foley. to mine in these hills. <laughs> Lucy Foley, the guest guest list. <laughs> okay. These are great. These are great. You guys should have a section of your podcast if you don't already. That's just the books. I know. I know. We were playing around with it, but it, it, it comes in like an order of like, what have you obsessed with? Mm, mm-hmm. But we are. We obs- we're obsessed with like true and we also, ooh, you know what? As a good podcast, broke my hand. My girlfriend told me to like the OC Swingers. Have you? No. Is that a new true crime podcast? That's a new one. And also, okay. I will say the um, Orange Tree. It's about a that murder one. that took place um, in Austin, Texas um, around ooh. UT. That's really good. We've just been watching. Yeah, I'm obsessed with true crime documentaries and like all documentaries. So. We just watched the Sasquatch one on Hulu, which ends up being not too many spoilers, but about uh, weed growing farms up in Humboldt County in Northern California. Very fascinating stuff. Oh my God, I'm going to do that. I haven't watched. Did you do the night soccer? Of course you did. Yes, of course. And then I had a, a bit of a tough time sleeping, actually. Like usually I can sleep after those. That one hit a little too close to home. Same with the Cecil Hotel one. Um, that one was a little tough too. But tough and also extremely fascinating. (laughs) Um, Okay. On a little bit lighter note, Molly, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest that is on the podcast. And the first is, who alive or dead would you most like to throw cold spaghetti at? Who alive or dead would I like to throw cold spaghetti at? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. (laughs) That caught me off guard, Grace. Who alive or dead cold spaghetti? I think John Mayer is a little bit of a douche. John Mayer, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved his music. And then he kind of became a little douchey. And I don't know why, because he's so cute. It's yeah. weird. Okay. I, don't know, I don't know if it'd be cold spaghetti, but he's That's still it. hot. It's it's weird. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't followed what he's up to currently. I, don't know. I, don't I know, know he got into stand up comedy for a brief moment. So oh, I don't really? know. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. It was interesting. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, okay. The other question that I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or like a bathroom mm-hmm. emergency, but you can only use three words or three small phrases to describe the event. So, for instance. Mine um, is college jogging front lawn. Sag Harbor. <laughs> okay. Dumpster. <laughs> Shitting. <laughs> I love that you immediately have, uh, uh, like I watched this look uh, come over your face that seemed like you were really taken back to a specific time and you don't have to tell us any more about it because that really uh, described a lot of it for us but mm-hmm. I really appreciate your candidness there 
You're welcome. Um, okay, now we have a bit of a new section in our podcast called Deeper Hot. And it's where you can choose to answer a deep question. We have um, some prepared. Or you can give us a hot take on, on something. And we have a, a topic for you. So would you like a deep question? Or would you like a hot take? I would like a deep question. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Was there ever a time you felt like you should not have left Kentucky? There was a time so specific that I felt like I should never have left Kentucky. Mm. I had just left um, Vanderbilt. I'd spent the summer in New York with Next Models. And um, I had gotten a plane ticket. They had forwarded my plane ticket. I didn't, the amount was like $737 for me yeah. to go. And I was supposed to go to Greece and then they changed it. And so I ended up going to Germany. I didn't speak the language. I didn't know anyone. And I hadn't really flown that much. And I flew from New York and into Germany. I'd flown all night. I wake up. Now you have to understand the circumstance. Yeah. I came from a chocolate chip, cookie, you know, dough, ice cream, windy, frosty, pizza, Vanderbilt, sorority girl, yeah. going into, poli you know, going into, um, um, did you say poli sci or something? Yeah. Poli yeah. sci. To now I am standing in an agency in Hamburg, Germany, and they're saying, oh no, we made a mistake. We <gasps> shouldn't have, um, we shouldn't have forwarded the money. You're never, ever, ever going to work. Can you go downstairs, get your suitcase and pull out your jeans so we can see their size? Oh my God. And at that moment, Grace, <laughs> was the moment Holy that I shit. thought I should have fucking moved back to Kentucky. Yeah, no shit. Oh, the modeling industry is so glamorous. Um, but how did it did you... have a good, It did have a good ending because... I ended Looking up leaving him, of course. <laughs> and then I see the same guy strolling. I was at Mar, I was at uh, I think Etienne Marcel in Paris, which is a beautiful fountain, a beautiful kind of metro stop. Mm -hmm. There was a great um, shoe store that we always were obsessed with. And I finally had money and I looked fucking amazing. This was several years later. And he sees me walking. Uh -huh. And I do like the perfect cover girl flip, <laughs> or maybe like perfect. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Sorry, missed out. Wow. It was just like a perfect moment and yeah. being on the cover of French Vogue a few months later. But it, wow. it was definitely one of those moments that you look back and you think, I could have stopped. Like that one yeah. altercation moment, if you take that little window out of my life. Yeah. Um, well, the, I mean, you hear yeah. that there are horror stories in the modeling world and it's kind of like a joke, but it's only a joke because there's truth in comedy and like, it's true. Um, how, how did you get into the modeling industry to begin with? If you were in college and then did someone discover you? Is that how it happened? Yeah. I mean, listen, I've been, you know, I remember my mom and I having such a big fight about me wearing heels that were like, <laughs> I mean, like a quarter, like less than a quarter <laughs> baby of an inch. Kitten heels. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby <laughs> kitten heel. And, um, yeah, we had a fight about, I've always been tall. I was my height in eighth grade. I'm, I'm, you know, basically 5'10". I wear a 41. Like I was this in yeah. eighth grade. So a lot of people always said I should model. My mom was a beautiful, stunning woman who did a little bit back in the day, even though she went to Memphis State and was basically ran two companies. But... <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> I'd gotten an opportunity early on to have my pictures made. And I was like, mom was like, you can do it. You know, like, let's take the pictures. And anyway, those pictures got sent mm. to New York and they said, would you come up? And I'm like, I guess, like I'm in school, you know what I mean? And yeah. one thing led to another. And, you know, I, I will always say, you know, always say yes more than no. And no being a complete sentence. Um, mm -hmm. but I, the opportunities by taking that, you know, 
that little leave of absence, I still have the letter to Vanderbilt that I wrote in my original modeling kind of notebook journal calendar that says, I got this opportunity instead of going abroad for the semester, I'm just, I'm going to take one semester off. (laughs) And it's in my handwriting. And I literally sent postcards back to my family being like, maybe I could like do something in this business. Like, Aww. And I know, like I, I looked at them when I was recently home and, you know, like you look back and you think, oh my God, like, how did I even do that? You yeah. know, so I do think like the modeling allowed me to travel at a, at a you know, it allowed me to build up, resi- you know, resilience. Mm-hmm. Um, finally, when I went to the acting, I was like, there's not one thing anyone hasn't ever told me. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. My nose. Yeah. I never knew, Grace, <laughs> in the 23 <laughs> years, 22 years that my nose was crooked until the photographer was like, can you go a little to the left? Can you look to oh. the, the left? To, okay. To the little bit. I'm like, finally, I came up to me. He goes, well, you know, your nose is crooked. I was like, No, no. Um, But thank you. Thank you. That'll be helpful to know in the back of my mind for the rest of my life all the time. (laughs) All the time. (laughs) I know. It's like the modeling industry was like YouTube comment section before there was a YouTube comment section. 100%. 100%. So, but it definitely, you know, I will say it definitely, you know, and and now, you know, with the, the clear, um, comments of social media that people so loving, <laughs> lovingly make. And mm-hmm. so, you know, so proud that it definitely, you know, I built up a, a pretty, pretty thick skin. So, yeah. you know, every now and then the comments will bother me. Yeah. Um, That's just being but, human. I'm the same way that I feel like I've got it all handled after years and years. And then one of them gets you on a day when you just don't feel that confident and it just sneaks right in there and hits your ego and pops it. (laughs) Oh, yes, it does. (laughs) And it's tough. Um, Okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, uh, we have some questions submitted from um, listeners that need some advice. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Okay, Molly, uh, we have some questions submitted from some listeners and viewers that need some guidance. So here's our first question. Um, It's uh, titled Candy Thief. My husband has no interest in desserts or candy except for when he's very inebriated. I'm a teacher, so I tend to go to bed early. Lately, when I wake up in the morning, all of my candy, particularly my Reese's, are gone. And there are empty wrappers littering my husband's desk where he watches YouTube late at night. I've tried hiding my Reese's in several places. I think he wouldn't find them. The cat treat drawer, my underwear drawer, empty containers of other food he's not interested in, etc. None of it works. Suggestions for other Reese's hiding spots would be great appreciated. Honestly, I think we need to switch our candy um, <laughs> because I think the Reese's is going to be too hard to too hard to cover up to hide. Mm-hmm. I I would suggest like sleeping, maybe sleeping with them under your pillow, but then be mushy, chocolatey, and kind of warm and gross. But <laughs> I would maybe go to a new candy obsession. Have you ever mm. thought of a Werther? They're caramel. They're hard. They they're yeah. just they're just delicious um, and he might not be obsessed with those i'm wondering with you because i could see this as being like a, also a problem with children yes have you had to do any um creative hiding for anything from your children yes i hide um, candy <laughs> from them every day um i actually have a stash in my closet that no one knows about and no one ever will besides you grace and all your okay. millions of listeners um right. but i hide candy from them at first when I did, I went into the pantry and I had all the stuff where they could get it eye level. But then I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? (laughs) Now they have to like climb a ladder and like break their arm to get to the nine boxes of candy. But then it just somehow like they find it. Like I saw him on a camera from downstairs (laughs) climbing up he used like this little day bed. Then he put his knee. Then he put his lids is like hiked himself wow. up, pulled himself and had something hidden from Valentine's <sighs> Day that I'd forgotten. I mean, he's four. 
I mean, there's something kind of impressive about that. It was impressive. I'm not going to lie. Like he literally could have been on a, he could have been on, um, what's the, um, what's the show American Ninja? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could have, he could totally got up there. Like he was fucking Spider-Man. I don't know. Well, I love that you kind of on your social media, like blatantly make fun of your children when they're acting out a little bit. Mm. (laughs) I feel like mom, mom. (laughs) Mom, mom, mom. I'm kind of a nanny. Today, the breakdown with Gray was like, I want more. I want more Paw Patrol, mom. I don't have enough. You have millions of Paw Patrol. You have stuff in my Amazon cart that you don't even know that I actually pressed. It. You don't even know. Yes, they're terrible. <laughs> uh, but I feel like that is kind of a an elusive mom tip. It's just sort of like... um you know, not belittling your children, but just like ma- like mimicking their own bad behavior back at them and see how they feel about it's it. It's amazing. Like I've gotten down and I'm like, oh, I want it, mom, mom. I just want it. I just want it. I just want it. Or like when they're watching a show, yeah, I'll be like, Brooks, Brooks Scarlet. I, can you go in, Brooks, Brooks? What mom? I'm, I'm watching a show. No, I, I know. I know, sweetie. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, Scarlett. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, I, like, so I taught great. them to say "excuse me" when they interrupt someone. So instead nice. of just not interrupting, they'll just say, "Excuse me, excuse me, accuse me, <laughs> accuse me, mom, mom, accuse, accuse." I'm saying, "Accuse me." <laughs> so they're gonna be annoying, but very polite while they're doing it. Totally. That's all you can hope for. Okay. Uh, one last question before we wrap up. Um, and we kind of get this question a bit and I'm wondering what your thoughts are on it. Um, someone asked, I'm turning 30 soon, freaking out about life. What's the best way to have a midlife crisis without causing too much emotional damage? Mm, I had a midlife crisis at, at 32. Mm. You know, I think you're going to get through it. Yeah. Um, it's, you gotta go with the highs and you gotta go with the lows. You gotta not call him or her, <laughs> Yeah. um, stick to your guns. The one thing I can really be honest, and we talk a lot about this on the, on the podcast is that it shouldn't be that hard. And that's Mm. the advice that I will give, you know, struggling people trying to make it work. I'm in therapy. Yes, I I did it. I did a little bit of therapy with a boyfriend. You shouldn't be doing therapy with a boyfriend before you're actually together. That's not the (laughs) best sign. Um, But I will say it shouldn't be that hard. And I don't mean that it's not, you're not going to have hard times. I'm not going to, I don't mean that you're not going to have difficult conversations and sometimes things do go bad and it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you're not, not meant to be together. But, um, I think, I think you just have to keep going. And yeah, I, I think I'm, what you said too, just the, the acknowledgement that like you're going to get through it is it sounds unbelievable when you're in the moment of feeling like nothing matters or you have no career trajectory or you have no like love interest um, or you don't really care about it and the world's been weird for the last year. Um, but knowing that like this is temporary. It's temporary. And just remember that everything is temporary. If you mm-hmm. really go back, I mean, I got dumped very hard. I thought he was the love of my life, still a great love of my life, but it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you marry every love of your life or you're yep. supposed to be with that person. But I remember finally going to therapy and I'm like, I just, I feel like, I feel like he died, you know? And I was, I mean, I was heartbroken. My mom had to come and live with me. I mean, have your mom come live with you in your thirties. Like I was so awful. I was so, I was so ultimately sad. And I remember the therapist saying like, in all practical purposes, he has died for you. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I just, he has an amazing family and I loved his friends and I, and, 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 and and I love to be a part of that. And that's where, and, you know, don't mean to sound like old, but this too shall pass. Like it did, mm-hmm. it ultimately passed. But I will say the simple acknowledgement of like, you will get through it. And I truly mean that. 
even as devastating, you know, as it feels in the moment, you will get through it. Yeah, totally. It's just little baby steps of acknowledging that and then acknowledging like, what's something you might start caring about? Or what's a tiny thing that you can do that's kind of nice for yourself? Or just like, not it doesn't have to be fixed or uh, figured out in all in like one day, one night, and there's not going to be like a magic switch that gets flipped that suddenly you're on the right track and everything's going well, it's going to be little by little by little by little. It's little little steps. And then one day you wake up and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, like months, she, year, years. I looked amazing because, you know, of course, when you're so miserable, oh, you look phenomenal. Of course, of course. That's the great and terrible byproduct of that. Uh, Molly, this has been so fun. Thank you for talking to us. Before we wrap up completely, we like to give our guests a little gift, um, a, a little token of appreciation. It's a personalized horoscope from us to you that Melissa just sent you in the chat. You had mentioned earlier that you're a Gemini, which is wonderful. We got it right. <laughs> but Wait, you're can welcome I read to read it. Yes, can please read it? read it out loud. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Grace. Dear Gemini, twin of the stars, the moon may be illuminated eliminating an end to a phase and a big project at the end of this month. This could mean the start of your new podcast or that that you hit the bottom on the bottle of the rosé. Either way, Grace and Melissa, <laughs> those are great things that possibly yes. happen. Yes. yes. Um, now, Molly, where can people find you and everything you're doing, including the podcast, if they don't know already? Uh, mollysims.com it's called lipstick on the rim we're going to be talking beauty and wellness and everything in between while possibly drinking and um and on social at molly b sims uh i'm awesome. i'm excited you know it's definitely a different path but you know i think it's uh i don't know i always i always i'm up for always a, a good challenge so. yeah it feels like you're living a real authentic self right now it's very exciting so go listen to the podcast you guys go follow her on social media it's very hilarious like i said she makes fun of her children in the best way possible and um we'll see you guys next time on another episode of not too deep goodbye too deep too deep too deep not too deep it was grace helbig not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. Music